Hello everyone, welcome to Heart of Tamara YouTube channel. I'm your host, Tamara Chaos. Please subscribe to my channel so that we can connect and support each other. All right, we're continuing with my book called Why I Am a Christian, and we're about to start chapter three. Chapter three talks about my experiences with churches. As a child and throughout high school, churches were pretty good. There was one church in high school that I really liked. The sermons were great and the pastor really took an interest in the youth. I had a standing appointment where I would go to his house once a week and we would chat and play basketball. It was really fun. As an adult, it became a lot more difficult to find a church, for the most part anyway, find a good church. Most of the time, I had to attend church by myself because my then husband would not attend church with me. We were married for 10 years, but then divorced in 2009. He died in 2023. There was one church in particular that he would attend to on occasions, but more about that later. I don't know the exact time frames of these churches that I'm going to tell you about because I attended quite a few trying to find a church that would teach me. And I do want to send a disclaimer that I did not make this video to complain about these churches. I'm just telling you what happened. One church that I enjoyed for the most part, but it changed when it seemed like they didn't realize that I was a regular attendee despite bringing five or six daycare kids with me every weekend. The adult Sunday school class started before the kids once. So I would bring the kids with me and then I would take them to their class and then come back to my class. One day, the teacher introduces himself and asks if it's my first time coming even though I had been coming for weeks with the kids. Again, not complaining, just he made a mistake, no big deal. Another church, this could have been the same church, I don't really remember. One Sunday morning, they had a service talking about miscarriages. At the end of the service, they asked whoever had had a miscarriage, go to the front of the church and get a rose, and then go to the lobby and sit on the bench and someone will come talk with you. No one came to talk to me. Again, I'm not sure if this is the same church, but it might be. But the pastor eventually at one of the churches started teaching Calvinism. So a bunch of us left. The church that had the rose thing with the miscarriages, that's the pastor that started teaching Calvinism. This church, or a different church, had a married couples class where we would gather and play games and whatnot. I went alone. One night was really cool because we played Pictionary. The word was Minnesota and I drew a tiny soda can. My team won that round. I really loved the Latter-day Saints church, even though I did not attend their church. I think I did once or twice, but it was just not for me. They were, however, the best examples of Jesus. They would come visit and help me with things that needed doing. Since I was in a bad state of mind at the time, it was very helpful. I don't need that kind of help anymore. There was a time where I had divorced my former husband and moved in with friends. In their town, I attended a small church. The pastor there was great. I asked if anyone in the church could donate antifreeze to me because my car kept overheating. He asked how much it would cost to fix it. I think I said 300. He said he got a surprise check in the mail and he would like to use it to help me out, to help pay to fix it. Okay, so now about the Baptist church. This was really the most loving church. I, as I'm going to say again towards the end of this essay, I do not need attention all the time. As I've been writing this, I realized that it may make, this whole thing makes me sound needy, but I'm not needy. I'm not needy. I just want to be acknowledged that I exist. Anyway, this Baptist church was tiny and had a very fire and brimstone pastor. I really enjoyed his sermons. One time, a couple with 10 kids invited me to their house and I played, and play, I played basketball with the boys outside. And then we all went back inside the house and had lunch together. And then we, you know, the, I can't remember if it was the mom or one of the sisters, but she played piano and we all sang songs. 
It was just so fun. Now, for reasons unknown, my ex at the time started attending another church when he could make it. This church insisted that I work in the nursery once or twice a month because I brought daycare kids to the nursery and they didn't think that it was fair that I was getting paid to watch kids when I wasn't really watching them. The pastor there ended up betraying me. He did something wrong, and I, but I have forgiven him. He was always accusing me of being selfish. After a while, he ended up scaring me and the police were called. He thought my ex was always the victim of emotional abuse and whatnot, but he didn't know the truth of what happened in that house. I have learned so much about interpersonal relationships since then. I came to the point where I was really fed up with churches. I was never, ever fed up with God because I knew that it was not God that was betraying me. It was the people in the church. The people in the church could not grasp how to act and treat people like Jesus would. Unless they fit their viewpoint, then all was well. We ended up splitting up and then after a year, I met someone else in North Carolina. We married in 2009. We found a couple of good churches to attend. They each had good aspects, but one of them was a little disappointing in one way. Every week they would ask for volunteers, so I filled out the connect card three times with no response. We ended up having a meeting with the pastor and I was finally able to find a place to serve, but it was always forgotten. When they would recognize volunteers, they would never mention my name. I would clean the front windows and doors every Friday afternoon after work, but it's okay. I didn't do it for recognition. I wanted to serve the church. We found another smaller church and both Phil and I were able to serve on the worship team together. He was on the worship team at the other church too. He was on the rotation. He served once a month on the team. They had several services on Sundays, so we were there for six hours. I would stay the whole time because for one, that way we only had to use one car, and for another, anything that I would do as an activity was online, so I could do it anywhere. And lastly, we cherish the time that we can spend together, even if we can't really socialize with each other. So anyway, we enjoyed both churches. Any family is going to have a little issues now and then, and this wasn't any different. I never gave up on God. God was not the problem, it was his people. In high school, I attended a camp. Uh, we took a trip to Mexico to build a house and a church. And there was a leader there that said to me, in order to have friends, you have to be a friend. I've tried to do this, but it is not always reciprocated, so I don't know what to do then. I have always kept my focus on God. Church is about learning about God, not socializing. They talk about how in order to grow in the faith, we need each other. But if that only applies to people who are in the clique, it doesn't work very well, does it? Trust me, I am not a drama queen. I do not want to be the center of attention at all. I just want to be treated like I matter. Why is any other person more important or worthy of acknowledgement than me? Now, don't get me wrong. The church we currently attend is great at in-person relationships. Most of them are over 60, so this is old hat to them. The concept they can't seem to grasp is what they enjoy in person has to be the same online. Yet, they don't have a problem ignoring messages. But since writing this, uh, they, it's like kind of hit and miss. Sometimes they do pretty good, sometimes they don't. But I have now taken on the attitude of Teflon. I'm gonna send you a message. If you answer, you answer. If you don't, you don't. I don't care. I don't care anymore. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Sometimes things are important. But it's okay. I guess it's just not their forte. But I do want to point out that it has gotten a lot better in some ways. I do, I mean, this was going to be my last church. 
I was going to give up on churches, not give up on God, but give up on churches. And this church is a really good church. We're super involved. Phil and I are on the worship team and, um, you know, I just feel it really feel like for the most part, we're a good part of the congregation. Haven't quite found the exact family family yet, but we're getting there. There is a person who is close to my age that we've started hanging out a little bit, so that I think that will help a lot because then I'll have somebody that I can relate to really, really good. So I started a few months ago working at a fitness center. The job is really rewarding and I feel like I'm contributing to a team. I have become familiar to many guests and so I smile at them and say hello. I can do the same at church, just not online so much. There's a physical therapist who that really listens when I tell him about videos that I'm working on. If I mention a video that is completed, he'll ask me if it's such and such video because I have told him in the past. He remembers even sometimes three weeks later. and. I just really feel like he gives an effort to listening to people when they when they speak to him. He's just such a good listener. He he really takes the time to store it into his long-term memory. The owner of the coffee bar located in the gym is also a good listener. He shows genuine interest and I admire that. I would like to do I'd like to do the same when I have the opportunity. I really tried now you know I've always I've always kind of kept to myself because uh, growing up and whatever it just seems like most people just didn't want to they didn't want to hear from me they would just ignore me or whatever so I I just took on the attitude of I'll just be quiet and now I've kind of changed my attitude of I am important and what I have to say is important and I will keep saying it until you acknowledge what I'm saying because I feel like if everybody else, everybody else has the right to share, I have the right to share too. Now, like I said, I am not a drama queen. This video is making me sound like I need to be the center of attention. No, 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 no. I just want to be respected. That's all. That's all I want is to be respected. So I'm going to try to do the same. I'm going to try to make people feel like they matter because I want them to feel like, I want them to show me that I matter. So, and uh, the person I was telling you about that's close to my age, we, you know, she's even started a book club and it's a Bible book club. And so we're, right now we're doing a book called Dangerous Prayers and it's been going really good and we're almost done. And so after that, we're going to have to find something else to do. But, um, I really hope that people check out the miracle story that I talked about in chapter two, because I just cannot fathom how people could not be super amazed by a two-year-old throwing, accidentally spilling water all over her face, and then the and and then there would be an imprint of a hand when nobody was near. I wish I could get a response, because then I will know what people's perspective is. What do you hear when you hear that story? What is your perspective? I just think it's so amazing and I, I would love it if somebody would be like, wow, that is an amazing story. So I really hope you check out chapter two, but if not, it's okay. I know that with my current husband, I've shared the story and he's been wowed. I mean, and again, I'm not even looking for attention from myself. I'm just like, look what God did. Look what God did. That's, uh, anything I do on my YouTube channel is to tell you, look what God is doing. Look what God has done. Not me. Not me. This channel is not mine. This channel is God's. I am dedicating this channel to God. Everything I do is for God. This is all for God. I want God to be glorified. Not me. Not me. No, no, no. So check out chapter two. Um, Christ cares. Christ is about love. Christ is interested in our lives, despite the fact that many humans are not. 
Again, please don't misunderstand the purpose of this essay. The purpose of this essay was that there's so many people that banish going to church because of bad experiences that they have had. But, you know, and so, okay, it's one thing to banish a church, but don't banish God. It's not God that has failed you. It's churches that have failed you. There's so many churches that just can't figure out how you're supposed to take an interest in people. We're so busy. Everybody's so busy. And then if you if you act like you want attention, then you're accused of wanting attention. Well, of course you want attention. Doesn't anybody want to be acknowledged? Just because somebody wants to be acknowledged doesn't mean that they're attention seeking in a bad way. People need to be acknowledged. People need to know that people care for them. The church is supposed to be the people that are showing they care. It takes effort. It takes effort. If somebody wants to play piano but doesn't practice, they're not going to get very good at it. Nothing will come out that is, that is good. But if they put in effort and practice, then they can make music or maybe they decide that this is just not for me i'm going to move on to a different instrument or something the church is supposed to be about loving each other about helping each other you're supposed to help people in the church even if it's something that they can do themselves if they ask for help they obviously need help i don't understand why you would not help somebody just because they're capable of doing it themselves Maybe they don't know how. Maybe they don't know where to start. Maybe get to know them. Oh, there was a there's a pastor I like to listen to, and I'll have to. I might have to make an update to this video. What did he talk about? Like, oh, um, there was a there was a lady in the church or in, the, in the there's a lady in the Bible that um, she showed. So there was a guy who kept traveling and he would always end up staying at her house and he stayed there so often that she said to her husband, let's make him a little apartment on the roof. And so they built him a room on the roof so that every time he came, he could just go there and stay. And that's how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be welcoming and showing hospitality to people. You know, so I just, I, I wish churches... And I'm not saying all churches. Like, there are churches, like I've talked about. There are some churches that are really good. But there's some that could use some help. And reach out to people. Respond to them. Be a friend. Online and offline. I know that um, a lot of people avoid offline... Com I mean, online conversations because... You know, it's hard to say uh, something without people getting the wrong idea. I understand that. So maybe there's some conversations that should not be online. But if somebody just wants to so somebody to say hello to them, or they've shared something that they really thought was interesting, respond. In the shadow of ancient walls, I just don't understand. I don't understand the no response, but you know, like I said, I'm okay now because I'm, I'm Teflon. And so, if you're not going to respond, don't respond. I don't care anymore. I'm just going to do my thing. Making these videos for God. In the darkest hour, so that's all I have to say. And I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day or night. And I will see you in my next video. Bye bye. Whispers of the dawn. When was the last time you took a good look at your website? Are you armed and ready for a cybersecurity threat? Did you write an amazing short story but need illustrations? Make all your worries go away with a quick email to Shama Patel. Your solution. Visit eveninglightdesigns.com or send an email to shama at eveninglightdesigns.com. I would like to introduce to you a book called Emmanuel by April Marie. Emmanuel tells the story of Jesus' life by using all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 
and part of the first chapter of the book of Acts and part of 1 Corinthians 15. Learn the story of Jesus' life, where he was born, how he lived, and what he taught. See how he resisted the temptations of the devil, how he healed people and cast out demons. Discover why he went to the cross, how he rose from the dead, and why so many people love him today. This book follows Jesus' earthly life from the very beginning of the gospel record, through his many trials and his confrontations with the religious leaders of the day. It also tells the accounts of his miracles, betrayal, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. This book is not intended to take the place of the Bible, but it may help you understand the story of Jesus' life better by giving you a more chronological account of it. However, nothing can ever be more complete or accurate than the Bible itself. Jesus' words are underlined. This book is also available in red letter edition.